She'll be well enough, Obadiah, by and by. There's naught to be done but trust in the Lord. And heed Master Trowbridge's advice in the matter. Master Trowbridge is more practiced to delivering lambs and foals than treating human maladies. Prescribing that foul concoction of pounded babery bark. She's a strong girl, Obadiah. I have seen her at work with thee in the fields. She'll not succumb. Not charity. I know not what I would do without her, Thomas. Her mother died of birthing. I can only pray it will not be for naught. Ampula? Yes, child? Dost thou hear it? What? Such a great roar, like thunder. No, no. Tis a cloudless sky. It's hot, no thunder. He be dreaming, child. Nay, not thunder. Tis a beast. The roar of some great beast. Ambula? Oh, child, no harm will come to thee. I will see that no harm come to thee. Please turn that down. The brother is still very sick. 102. Well, it's dropping steadily. I'd say the worst was past. You said there were other cases in this area? Yeah, mostly from other houses along Harmon Brook. Bacterial infection caused by stagnant water, inadequate train off. Yes, I remember my mother telling me about a similar outbreak when she was a girl. Yeah, these things come in cycles sometimes. But this particular strain is a stubborn cuss. It's cropped up hereabouts in some form or another ever since colonial days. <sighs> Who is she? What is it, Peter? That woman sitting there. Who is she? Delirium. That'll pass as these temperature drops. <sighs> that water feels good. Are you thirsty, Peter? Would you like something to drink? How about a glass of orange juice? How about a glass of orange juice? Lot is some gibberish. Would you like a sip of water? You're much cooler now. Feeling stronger? Yeah, much better. Thanks, Mom. Who are you? Who are you? What is happening to me? My name is Peter Wood. What's yours? Charity? Charity Payne, where are you? Why can I not see you? I live in Anniston, Massachusetts, next to Harmon Brook, near Bear Rock. Nay, it is not possible. I live not half a league from Bear Rock, and there be no other houses in all of Anne's town within sight of it. Anne's town? That's what they used to call Anniston until about a hundred years ago. Uh, do you know what, what year it is? Of course. It is the first year of the new century. The year of our Lord, 1,700. Yeah, maybe for you, but, uh, for me it's the year 1985. <laughs> Ma, tis absurd. It cannot be. I don't understand it myself, but it's, it's happening. I can see through your eyes and you can see through mine. How is it possible, hearing ye in my head as I do? Well, when you pray, Charity, you say the prayer inside your head, right? And God hears it even though you're not speaking it out loud. Tis not the same. 
You be not my maker. No, no, of course not. But if God allows you to speak to him that way, doesn't it stand to reason that he could allow you to speak to someone else the same way? I would fain believe it. For the only other answer is that I am bedeviled. But this proves not that ye be from some distant time. Terry, look at this. What sort of bird may it be? It's not a bird. It's an airplane. It's a device. A, a carriage used to carry people from one place to another place. <laughs> Oh, it's true, really. Oh, mayhap you do speak from some distant time, but you'll not get me to believe such fancy easily. Hmm. We'll see. Oh, Mary, tis delicious. What would it be? Oh, it's orange juice. Oh, I seem to have heard tell of it. Pretty, drink some more. Charity, I'll do better than that. Mm. I like this one best of all. What's its name? Chocolate ice cream, the staff of life. Peter, I've been a-wondering. What do you look like? Well, I told you I'm 16, sort of thin. Dost thou possess a mirror? Yeah, sure. Mary, I doubt not you be comely, but folk have changed. Uh, now let me look at you. Uh, look into the brook where the water is dark. Oh, you're quite a beauty, Charity. Oh, no. Not I. Ursula Miller is far more fair. She can't be any fairer than thee, Charity Payne. But, Peter, if a car is but a kind of carriage, why must thou wash a carriage? Washing a horse, aye, that I can understand. But this other... You'd be surprised how many otherwise rational human beings think of their cars as almost living creatures. Ah, and must thou change the straw in the barn beneath thy carriages as well? <sighs> Cute, Charity. Cute. Uh, Charity. Charity. Father has asked me to fetch some water if thou would not mind. Mm. Our well has been tainted. We can drink not from it. Of course, Ursula. As much as you need. Come. I hear tell, half the wells in all the village have been tainted. How it has come to pass, no one knows. But I believe to be an ill omen. Oh, Ursula, thou believest everything to be an ill omen. And how else to account for this plague which has sore afflicted us? The fever which nearly claimed thee, the livestock which suffer so even now. I hold it possible that the tainted water be responsible for the sickness. As for the other, Thou knows nothing of it, Charity. No. Tis in piety at the root of it, and only prayer can sanctify these tainted waters. I uh, see what you mean about Ursula. We've got people like her in our time, too. Aye, she thinks she knows so much. If I were to tell her but half of what I've seen in thy time. I might take her down a couple of pegs, or at least shut her up. Oh. Ursula, did I tell thee of what I saw while I was abed with fever? No, that you did not. Oh, it was of a wonder, to be sure. I did see a world, hundreds of years hence. 
in which carriages rolled with nary a horse before them. You jest with me, Charity, do you not? Nay, by the book, I swear tis true. And devices which capture music in a kind of bottle, releasing it at the merest touch. Television, don't forget about television. And boxes in which can be seen the likenesses of people and things many leagues distant. Likenesses? Aye, be like a reflection in a pond. And men walking on the moon. And men walking on the moon. Uh, well, it is most fascinating. Most fascinating. We must speak more of it some other time. Uh, thank you for the water. I'll see thee in school tomorrow. Good day to thee. <laughs> oh, she doubtless thinks me addled, but twas worth it for the look on her face. <laughs> talks with thy friends. Uh, it's okay. I don't exactly have a whole lot of friends at school. You see, when I was younger, I was advanced a grade or two. Uh, promoted. Skipping a year here, a year there. Every time I thought I was settling in, I'd just get bumped into a new homeroom. A whole new set of kids. I guess I never got very comfortable with social situations. Thou hast always seemed most comfortable with me. Yeah, but that's, that's different. Peter, that book you were reading, what would its title be? Oh, that was Les Miserables. Ah, terrific book. It was written, will be written, in 1862. Do you read much, Charity? As much as I am able. I've read the good book, of course, and Pilgrim's Progress. And my schoolmaster gave me two of Master Shakespeare's works. Julius Caesar and A Midsummer Night's Dream. Ah, oh, they were wonderful. I would fain read more, but books are costly. I count myself lucky to read and read again the books the Lord has seen fit to provide me. Charity, I think the Lord is about to show you the closest thing to heaven you're going to find on this earth. many as you like, through my eyes. Really? Does that really do such a thing for me? We'll start out with something you're familiar with. Shakespeare, maybe. And work our way up to the 18th, 19th centuries. Get your strength back some. Ah, good, good. Yes, perfect. Uh, Mary Peter, 
Besides, it's hard for me to believe. A revolution against the king? A new nation? You've seen the proof of it, Charity. Aye, and I would never have lived to see it come to pass but for thee. My thanks to you, Peter. Uh, by the way, son, you don't have to tell your mother about this, okay? Here's to... Uh, two distant friends. Okay. Charity, is there something amiss? What? Oh, nay. Nothing at all, Father. Peter, what, pray tell, was that? A Chardonnay, a wine. Haven't you ever tasted wine before? Nay, but I am not disposed against further experiment. <laughs> Find something amusing, Charity? Nay, nay. Just a thought. A passing thought. <laughs> Charity, what is wrong with thee? Wrong? Well, ah, what could be wrong? <laughs> I knew that word not quite well yet. Just a fever coming back. Come. Bed with thee most feetly. How are you? Mary, father, I feel fine. It was a terrible thing you let me do, Peter Wood. It took me the better half of the morning to convince father I was well and fine and let me rise from my sick bed. I'm sorry if I caused you any problem, Charity. Nay, it was not a real problem. But I am sorely troubled by something. Ursula Miller said an ill thing to me today said it was an untruth about the 13 states, a vow that I was devil-ridden. And Ursula Miller has been my best friend. Charity, did you say devil-ridden? Aye, and worse. She took great stock in the fact that our well water was fresh when all the others was tainted, and that I recovered from the fever when so many others did not. Oh, my God, Salem. Peter, you must stop taking your maker's name. Damn it! How could I have been so stupid? Peter! Uh, Charity. Not another word to anybody. Tell Ursula that, that you've been fooling, making up stories to amuse her. It would not be right. Forget what's right. Tell her that it was all a pack of lies. Tell her now. But I must milk the cow first. Oh, Charity, please. Nay, the cow must be milked. Milk her faster than she's ever been milked before. Just go. Oh, mercy. Mercy, no. Charity, what is it? Obadiah Payne. Obadiah, I would speak with your daughter, Charity. Now speak with me, if you would reprimand her. What mischief she's up to this time? A terrible summer it has been, Obadiah, fraught with death and disease. And now old master Croft you has delivered a monstrous lamb with a pinched up face and a third eye. Great God. It would do you no good to blaspheme, Obadiah. Witchcraft's afoot again, and some say your charity is at the bottom of it. My charity is no witch. That would be for me to decide. Bring it to me. Nay. I'll not ever stand accused by the like of you. You go. You'll not speak to her. I'll not allow it. As you wish, Obadiah. Father! No! No! needed me most. Nay, Father, thou hast never failed me. Leave him be. You've heard him enough. 
Take him to Master Trowbridge. He'll mend him. I wish to speak with thee inside. Oh, my God. What have I done? Look at me, Charity Payne. I said, look at me. How long have ye been a witch, Charity Payne? I am no witch. What demon did ye take to be your lover? And where did ye consummate your unholy union? I do avow in the sight of God I know nothing of demons or of witchcraft. If invoke not the Lord, Charity Payne. His name given voice by witch's breath is sacrilege indeed. But if you be telling true, tis simple to discover. I must search your body for witch marks. Come, take off thy frock. Faith Tanner was brought before ye last year. Was she not, Squire? Aye. And I asked her then what I ask you now. And finding no witch marks, I judged she be telling true and released her most featly. Why was then she was weeping when she left ye? I know not. Tears of gratitude, mayhap. Come. Take off thy frock. Your search for witch marks is a long and thorough one. Aye, it must be thorough, for the devil's ways are cunning. Now take off thy frock, I command it. Do ye truly believe in witches, Squire Hacker? If ye would avoid public trial and condemnation. <laughs> So sorry. This is all my fault. I should have known better. Nay, tis my time. Twas I who should have known better. But Peter, stay with me if thou wouldst. I am in sore need of a friend just now. I'll be right here, Charity. Look, you can't go back there. If, if that sleazy squire has any influence in the court, you just fixed yourself for good. Influence? Mary, he is the court. He is the judge. Oh, damn. Could you make your way to Boston? Or to New York? I mean, New Amsterdam. Leave my home forever? Nay. And I would not dare the trip. For the moment, I would hide in a cave nearby. There is a trail on the other side of the brook which is stomped by a herd of deer. Mayhap their scent will throw off any pack in my pursuit. They'll use dogs to track you? Aye, on the morrow. You live in a savage age, Charity. Aye, tis fortunate we have not invented the bomb. Peter? All those books I see around thee, would there be one that might recount the history of these colonies? Sure, plenty. Why? Would you look in one? And see what befell me. 
Charity, we've been at this for hours, and I still can't find any record of a charity pain tried for witchcraft in or around 1700. Oh, praise the Lord for that. Yeah, but these records are by no means complete. I mean, Anstown was a pretty small town. I hate to say it, but I don't think this proves a thing. I see. Hey, but I'm sure we'll find something that says you were tried and found innocent of the charges. Once accused and put on trial, no one is found innocent. But thank you for trying. We still have two more hours till the library closes. Still have time to... Wait a minute. Did you say that squire's name was Hacker? Aye. Ah, uh, then look at this. Jonas Hacker, born Liverpool, England, date uncertain. Squire Hacker, a resident of Anstown, C.F. Aniston, was tried and convicted of the willful murder of two sailors. The trial was posthumous several months after his decease from natural causes in 1704. The sentence, death by hanging, which since it could not be imposed, was commuted to the forfeiture of his sizable estate to the crown. Mary, I remember well when those men disappeared. A ship's captain and a common sailor. They were said to have a great sack of gold for some business with Squire. But Hacker said they never arrived at his house. While the motivation and details of the murder may have been open to question, the evidence was clear cut. The details are these. Charity? I want you to go to your parson's house. He can protect you better than your father till your trial. Must I be tried? You're going to insist upon it. Charity Payne, are you willing to swear upon the book? I do swear to speak naught but the truth. Charity Payne, do you deny being a witch? I do. You do be one? Nay, I do deny it. What of the monstrous lamb, born of Master Croft's you? Was it the work of Satan? I know not. Was it then the work of God? I know not. You hold that he might create such a monster? I know naught about it. You deny saying that this colony and its neighbors will in due course make war against our king? Nay, I do not deny that. Did you tell Mistress Ursula Miller that ye had flown a great journey through the air? I did tell Ursula that one day folk would travel in that wise. I did tell her that I had seen such travels through eyes other than mine own. I am blessed with a sort of second sight. Blessed or cursed? What evil things do you see with this second sight? God permits it. It cannot be accursed. Most often times, I see the world as it will one day be. Such things are no more and no less evil than those we see around us. Do you use this devilish power to spy on your neighbors? Tis not devilish. And I cannot see into the doings of my neighbors. Except... What? Speak up, girl. Except what? Once. I did perceive by my seeing a most foul murder. Murder? Aye, to tell true, two murders. Men whose corpses lie buried in a dark cellar close unto this very spot, unhallowed. Between them lies a great satchel of gold guineas, now half empty. A cellar? Aye, a root cellar. Be like the place where one would keep winter apples. Do ye wish me to speak more of it? Nay. Thy words have the ring of truth about them. Charity Payne has put her hand upon the book and sworn to tell true. An act I opine she could scarce perform were she a witch. Does any person differ with me? Nay. Very well. Now, Master Trowbridge holds that the lambing at Master Croft's was the result of some noxious plant on Master Croft's pasture. 
not of witchcraft. And that the cholera, which has afflicted us, comes from naught but drinking bad water. He advises boiling it. I prefer to add a little rum. <laughs> <laughs> now, as to the second sight, Charity has laid claim to it, and I called it devilish to test her. But second sight is not witchcraft, as you all know. My own grandmother had it, and a better woman there lived. I hold it to be a gift of God. Does any dispute me? Nay. I would warn Charity to be cautious about what she sees and tells. For second sight can lead to grievous disputes. I do not hold with her story about the two murdered men, although I think that in her sight she speaks true. If any has aught knowledge of such a dire crime, let him step forth and speak. Then, by the authority conferred upon me by His Excellency the Governor, I declare that Charity Payne is innocent of the charges brought. She may be released. Peter? Yes, Charity? Oh, thank you again, Peter. I'm beholden to thee. Oh, forget it. Look, I got you into this mess in the first place. Anyway, it all worked out the way it did because, well, that's the way it happened, you see? Not truly. How do we know Squire won't dig up those old bones and burn them? Well, because he didn't. Four years from now, he'll die and somebody will find them. Peter, I am afeard it must be wrong, thee and me talking together like this, and knowing what is to be and what is not. What do you mean? What could be wrong with it? I... I fear for my family, for my father. I dare not risk his safety again. Look, Charity, we'll just be more careful next time, that's all. Even the most careful of people oft times make mistakes. Nay, I think twere better... twere better you should stay in your time. And I in mine. Charity. You are the first real friend I ever had. Thou shalt have others, Peter, and they shall be proud to call thee a friend, e'en as I am. Thank you, Charity. Thank you for everything. And you, Peter. Thou hast shown me a world I would ne'er have known. I shall carry that world with me the rest of my days. Goodbye, Peter. Charity, please. And God bless thee. He reached out with his mind, searching for some trace of her but found only silence. Peter Wood was alone. friends, and a new confidence. And in time, 
he began to doubt whether it had ever really happened. Until one day... Peter? Charity? I. For a minute, please, Peter. Only for a minute. But I had to tell you. There is a message. A what? Look at Bear Rock, Peter. Under the bear's jaw, on the left side. Uh, Charity! Harmon Brook is very different today. Its water is not quite as pure. Its banks lined with tracked homes and shopping centers. But Bear Rock is still there, and so is a message. A message from a girl long gone, and yet never really gone in heart and mind. A last remembrance of friendship and first love. A love that will live only and always in the Twilight Zone.